you could make the argument that it appears with Baruch Spinoza, Benedictus de Spinoza, the uh, 17th century Amsterdam Jew philosopher and his denial of the immortality of the soul and the mosaic authorship of the Bible uh, that led the Jewish community of Amsterdam to expel him from its congregation. But he did not, as previous heretics had, become a Christian. So he was a person without a religious affiliation. He never denied his Jewishness, his origins, his essence, if you will, but he never became a Christian. And so he was a person without religion. And you might argue therefore that he is, let us say the first secular Jew. He remains unique for a long time until the French Revolution, which begins to differentiate between citizenship, being in the French Republic, religion, being a Jew or a Catholic. And uh, Jews begin to explore this differentiation and ask themselves the question, can one be a Jew and non-religious? And the answer is affirmative. Even back in the Talmud, it says, Yisrael af al Yisrael hu, a Jew who has sinned is nevertheless a Jew. And we still haven't solved the issue of whether a Jew who becomes a Christian is still a Jew. And that's exemplified in two figures, one from Eastern Europe and actually both from Eastern Europe. Uh, that would be Oswald Rufeisen, who evaded murder by the Nazis, who in fact played a heroic role during the Holocaust but became a Carmelite monk, arrived in Israel and wanted to be classified as a Jew. The second is Aaron Lustiger, better known as Cardinal Jean-Marie Lustiger of Paris, who during the Holocaust, uh, though his parents were born in Poland, was hidden in a French village and also through conviction became a Catholic. And to this day, there's a debate about whether these two people uh, classify as Jews. But, you know, we have a saying in Yiddish, which is uh, a pun hard to translate, but it means that as it goes with the Christians, so it goes with the Jews.